Describing infiltration, we often are looking for simple equations that relate the rate of infiltration or the cumulative infiltration to time. And so the classical result from Horton in the 1930s, he says the instantaneous rate of infiltration is equal to the final rate of infiltration time, uh, plus the initial rate minus the final rate times the exponential beta t. What's that mean? That means that if we have at some initial rate of infiltration, then in time, it exponentially decays and goes to some final rate of, in, final rate of infiltration. And it does so with a decay coefficient of beta. Okay. So it really just says that in time, the rate of infiltration is exponentially decaying between an initial value and a final value. And it turns out, if you plot data up on this, it works out beautifully. So oftentimes, the, the, you're able to fit these data very nicely to a, a set of data. Now, just fit this model to a set of data. And the cool thing is, we can integrate under this curve, so the area under this curve is the cumulative infiltration. That's how much water has gone in in total. So if we get to that time, add up all that water, and that's the total infiltration. And we can integrate it and get the cumulative infiltration here as the, 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 the final infiltration times time, and then et cetera. Okay? So that's a fine model. Why would we look further? Horton found that this actually did a very good job of describing it. Well, for example, here's a model put forward by Broussard. And what we notice that's quite different about this model is instead of using empirical these are, are obtained from an experiment. So we had to run an infiltration experiment, and we get an infiltration model. On the other hand, here what we see is that Broussard is using only things such as the saturated conductivity, the sorptivity, one soil parameter. So this is the, the particle size distribution or it's related to the particle size distribution, and then time. And so the thing is here is we see a model for infiltration, which by the way can also be integrated, which is based on independently measurable quantities. So we can take this, the soil sample to the lab, measure its saturated conductivity, measure its sorptivity, and then make predictions about the infiltration that would result. So we fundamentally have these two different categories of infiltration equations. We have the empirical infiltration equations and we have the physically based infiltration equations. And the physically based infiltration equations have the great advantage that you can use parameters you obtain from the literature or from independent measurements to predict infiltration, whereas the empirical formulations, you actually must fit an infiltration event to those parameters. Each of them can be quite accurate, but the predictive uh, qualities of a physically based equation are far greater in terms of being able to say what would happen if, for example, the, the soil was initially moist or other conditions were changing. Then we could make predictions here, where here we have to repeat our measurements empirically to get a new result. So I want to make that emphasis here that infiltration equations come in two quite different flavors, empirical and physically based.